Hey, Madge, what's coming up on today's episode of Madge Unmuted? Dot, dot, dot. Not a hell of a lot. Okay. Big ass train wreck. Nice and, talking to you. And castration with Todd Youngman. Bye. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Caller, are you there? <laughs> everybody welcome to another episode of madge unmuted i am your hostess madge madigan hi madge welcome thank you y you are and um <laughs> and, and donata and uh, uh with me as always is fitz yeehaw Sk scott fitzgerald what are Skit. you george bailey yes scott fitzgerald from rockbox studios What's going on, Madge? You look good. I like blue looks. You Thank look good you. in blue. I know that's funny. Every you're time I've worn, uh, this if you're color. wearing wh white underwear, then you're very patriotic today because you got the red hair, you got the blue. Yeah, that's kind of weird, but thanks. Uh, Spits of <laughs> Rockbox Studios for all your recording needs. If you need something recorded, you need something recorded, <laughs> or just or, recorded, or recorded. Any of those fits. Yeah, he's we'll your do man. It. We got it. Anyway, let's get to our guest because he's to far more interesting than we are. Today we have a uh, comedian and, and marketing dude and all ground great guy. Yeah. Todd Youngman. Hey, I, I was just watching you guys on the little playback monitor and now I can't. Oh, there they are. Oh, it's us now. Yay. Oh, he's tricky like Scott that. Scott does a great job here. Doesn't he though? He really does. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. I'm not even going to look at you, Madge. I'm just going to look at the monitor while we I talk. know. I try, I try not Which to do, do that. Which do you do? Um, I, you, you look at the guests? I'm like all over. Yeah. Um, so you'll see I'm here. There, okay. I'm here. So, um, hi. Hi. Uh, what, what should I have introduced you as? Oh, uh, which, anything, you know, Dude. a comedian's fine. A comedian. Yeah. yeah. A comedian. How about a fine comedian? Fine comedian. Fine young comedian. So far. Fine. fine I so loved far. them. <laughs> fine young comedians. <laughs> oh, they were good. <laughs> She drives me crazy. crazy. Oh, I hated that song. What? The, my favorite was Johnny. We worry. Won't y'all come oh, on? Oh, that was a good one too. Oh, I don't know that song. Thank you. They also did a version of Suspicious Minds by Elvis. Yes. It's also that was another hit. Yeah. Anyway, moving right along. Yeah. Uh, so Todd. What? Other than being, <laughs> God damn it! Other than being. What do you want? <laughs> Okay, Napoleon. Um, other than being, <laughs> make yourself a dang case of dilla. Yeah. Sorry, I got it. I'm trying to reel it in. Shut up! I'm going to break your coccyx. Yeah. Um. <laughs> so you're a comedian, but you're also a like a big head honcho at comedy at the Carlson. Oh, no, uh, no okay, way at you're all. A medium level honcho. No, yeah, maybe medium, if anything, but <laughs> no way near am I a head honcho. Okay. No, I just help with the marketing. Okay. Yeah. Good. Now you seem to be the also the resident MC for the show. No, not at all. Oh, you, you're no? getting it all wrong. Right. Have you looked at my uh, <laughs> my? Wikipedia what happened? Page? Didn't your people send over the proper uh, <laughs> information? No, I mean I, I I don't. I mean I'll host a show. I've opened shows for people, but I'm not the go-to guy. It just so happens that every time we've gone, you well, were no, every... you were the uh, the MC or or yeah. You know. Okay, maybe I that, have that it, happens. but like, um, cause every, cause I see your Facebook every day. Sure. So perhaps I have misconstrued. But I also perform other places than just comedy at the cross. Right. Yeah. So, so I've seen you. Um, you've gotten hooked up with um, fortune. Yep, fortune, fortune Feimster. You can say it. Go ahead. I got, well, no, Try it I was again, like from the top. <laughs> fortune Feimster. Yep. Is she from Rochester? Fortune or? Feimster. <laughs> yeah. No, Scott. Um. I love her. Yeah. And how fun is that? That was great. If we'd done five sold out shows this past weekend. Okay, so so that I get it right. So where what's your role in that? Uh, well, I am a I'm a comic, so uh, I know a lot of other comics. And my friend Chris Frangiola, who's a comic out in LA, uh, opens for her on the regular. Ah, so that's I, the so I mean, yeah. like, are you you're one of the acts or are you the I'm it. when it's when it's her it's just her and another comic so i do 25 minutes in front of her oh and okay then, see that's what i was right, getting yeah. at so so 
Chris normally, he's one of her regular, in her rotation, openers. So that's what you call it, an opener. A feature, right. A and oh, so, yeah. Yeah. So Chris, I messaged him and said, oh, Fortune's coming here. Are you going to open? And he said, I am I have my own show that night, but I'll recommend you. And she took the recommendation, and I opened for her in Syracuse Saturday, Rochester Sunday, and then next weekend I'm with her in Buffalo. I saw that. Very yes. cool. Yes. Is that everything you'd hoped it would be? Yes, it's amazing. <laughs> Any Anytime I, you can perform for sold-out audiences. I, well, yeah, I loved her. on, I, And I just heard it got, did Keenan get canceled? I don't think that's around anymore. Yeah, I just wa- it was just on. Yeah. I just watched the this um, season. She, I loved her on that. She's great. I loved the whole show. Yeah, she's great. Yeah. And it's too bad the show hoop. got canceled. I know. I know. But then, you know, it is NBC. Yeah. Um, so uh, now, um, let's get right to the meat. Uh, just be funny. Meat and potatoes? Fun. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Wait, wait, there was be a funny. reason you wanted to have me on. Do you no, remember? I'm kidding. Yes, oh. I know. Oh, yeah, I don't remember was, what it was. What was it? Uh, I want to Are we talking monkeypox? Uh, how to get into the business? <laughs> no. Yes, it's monkeypox. Oh, good. Um, no, okay. Look, I want to talk about... And I, I'm so pissed. I got this stupid laptop here today because I couldn't get my printer to work. I just yeah. have some notes. Um, essentially, I want to talk about heckling. Oh, yeah. Um, and, you know, we've had the recent attacks on comedians on the stage, you know, even over the years. Chris Rock, Dave <clears throat> Dave Chappelle, Jim Jeffries, um, and actually countless others that you don't hear yeah. about because they're not real big, real big names. Um, and I've read several articles and actually, I, there's a few um, Facebook or, or YouTube or whatever TikTok accounts like dedicated to like was Steve Hofstetter. Yeah, Steve. Like, yeah. He, his thing is all about he just posts clips of him like owning hecklers. Oh, he sure does. Yeah. So he's good at it. He is. Yeah. He's very good. But remember when heckling used to be like fun, funny? Mm. I mean. Yeah. There's oh. degrees of heckling. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah, definitely. Yeah, you know, it was always don't sit in the front row, but some mm-hmm. people loved it. They kind of sure. thought it was fun. But I think is that why everything's gotten so out of hand? It's is it the heckling that's gone, or did this just come out of left field? Society's gone insane. Yeah, uh, yeah. and I think it it goes. It's just before COVID, you know. And then once COVID, like people started to get really emboldened, like they're just yeah. like, yes, I'm, I'm. Yeah. They're like, they now have this license to say whatever the hell they want. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I'm thinking that, um, people think now it's like their God given right to say anything, anytime to yeah. anyone. Sure. And I was reading, um, an article, uh, about that and one of, uh, oh, you know, of course, you know, Judy Gold. Sure. Um, she has a great book. What's the book? I forget what it's called. She's out hawking it right now. I forget the name of oh, it. Oh, perhaps she'll come on my podcast. <laughs> yes, reach out to her. <laughs> um, she just had, it was a, I know of all places, it was a, an article in the New York Post. Um, so take it as you will. I will. <laughs> um, but she said, since the advent, advent of social media, everyone has a soapbox. So people feel powerful sitting behind their electronic devices, spewing hate and conspiracy theories. So... Now, when they get out in public, they don't know how to act. No, they they just continue to do it. I don't. So, do you think is that going to change anything at your club about security or yeah. at our club? It's always secu- That's always you know we've always dealt with it. We nip it right away. So, how do you do that? I mean, do you now have to make an announcement before the show? There will be no charging. <laughs> Comedians on well, the stage. Yeah, I mean, we have. Did you started around. using that video yet? What's that? Did you start using that video yet? There's something wrong with the sound. Really? Yeah, I don't know. They they had to fix the sound. It's, it's just not, wasn't. Yeah, it's not the voiceover that's wrong. No, the voiceover. Oh boy, are you he's. About? Well, we went on a tangent. <laughs> I, I, apparently. Well, well, you're talking about, you know, how you deal with that, and they created a video that sort of. I kind of figured gives that's you what the, you were talking about. Yeah, the gives disclaimer. you the, right yeah, the it gives you the sort of etiquette of, of like comedy yes, theater. Leave. Right. Yeah. So I, that's the thing. Like we give oh. people, we don't like to give three strikes. We'll give you one strike. Depending, there's degree here. There's degrees of heckling. Sure. Okay. Um, there's friendly fire. 
where they're just <laughs> where they just they're agreeing with you or you know just saying something nice then yeah. there's people like if if the comic will engage the the audience member which is our fault but you know <laughs> if we say something and then they talk and then we move on and they're continuing to talk about it oh that's also anytime you talk to a comic it's heckling okay yeah so when I the few times that I've done comedy I've I've realized that I'm better at crowd work, mm -hmm. but now I'm like, oh shit! How much do I do I create a monster? <laughs> you did that. That can happen when you create a monster. So, uh, like when I when I talk to somebody and the, the, if they start to go a little long on what they're saying, like sometimes you get a story if you just ask one question. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. So I'll just stare. Yeah. And then when they're done, I say, well, "It was nice talking to you," and then I move on. <laughs> And that, that's, you know, that's yeah. usually uh, it, they pick up on the cue and, yeah. you know, they stop the talking. That's that's a good. And obviously when you get alcohol involved, and yeah. there's, there's the drunk hecklers, which is a different. Uh, yeah, it makes it a little. Uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's because um, another it, part of that um, article said that, you know, they think the factors are, you know, you have. Uh, a lot of people in confined spaces, you have the, the proximity to the performer and alcohol. Yes. So it's kind of like a recipe for disaster. But here's the other thing about con any, you, people get offended by anything these days. Yeah. Anything. You could have a 20 minute set and somebody will find at least one thing that upsets them. Of course. You know, and there's different degrees of being upset where they're just like, ooh, just stewing about it at their table. Some feel they need to discuss it with you after the show, and others feel they need to come up and uh, tackle you. Oh, my. Yeah. There, um, another, I was reading about a, a guy that owns a laugh factory or something out, out west, and he was saying that he had a talk afterwards with somebody who got out of hand, and it was, you know, they talked it out, and they had civil discourse, and... He, they, he's like, you know, it was a joke, you understand. It wasn't a personal right. offense. And he's like, and the guy was okay and all was well. He's like, but I don't, I can't have a conversation like that yeah. after everything with multiple people, you know. Sure. I don't, how the hell is this shit going to stop? But I don't know. <clears throat> but people, like I said, people are very sensitive on both ends of the spectrum of what they're hearing. Yeah. And also, uh, you know, just wanting to attack. Yeah. And here's the funny thing about also about comedy. You can do a 20, 30 minute hour set mm -hmm. and say you're up there making jokes about gay people or black people or Puerto Rican people or mm -hmm. what's going on in the world. Or and then all of a sudden you make a joke about heroin addiction, but one person gets mad about it, but they laughed at everything else. But you hit on a topic that's sensitive to them, and, then it's all over. Yeah. And they feel they need to, yeah. you know, but they can't they can't just, you know, roll along with it. Exactly. Yeah. I, um, you know, I've tried to be, because I'll catch myself being sensitive about stuff. Sure. Um, I think it's it's a function, but, you know, just on online. I think it's a function of, you know, it's just you and the thing, you and the screen, and you're just, you in your stewing. Yes. And it's like, no, stop reading, man. <laughs> just <laughs> scroll on. And that's the other thing that I, I think uh, that social media, the advent of social media has made people even more, uh, you know, I don't know, people get more upset. Yeah. Oh. Because it's beamed into our eyes daily, you know, right. horrible things. And Well, I think there's also been certain um, leaders in the country, uh, figures that, you know, have emboldened people that it's your God-given right to say whatever you want, sure. like I said before, and those. But I always find it, they'll, you know, be telling people, oh, you're so sensitive. And then they turn around and say, oh, you can't say How that. How dare you? Or, yeah, don't. And it's like, do you, can you just stop and think yeah. for a minute hmm. at your reasoning? Everybody's sensitive. Exactly. Right, yeah, that's why I use talcum powder. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Here was a, this was, I agree with this here. I thought this was funny. Um, this was from that New York Post uh, article. Now people are taking out their frustrations on everyone from airline employees to professional athletes to school teachers. A CBS News poll from January found that 50, 54% of participants believe the biggest threat to America's way of life isn't natural disasters or foreign threats, but other people in America. Yeah, kind of makes sense, doesn't it? 
I mean, absolutely. The people I really feel bad for are the 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 flight attendants on airplanes. Oh my and god! And the people I at know. the customer service. I mean, people are losing their minds. I don't. That is such a that one I can't figure out the airline thing. Yeah. Why that specific? I mean. You ain't going to make me wear a mask. That's, that's what it going is. against my goddamn right. That's what, he's, that's what he just hit on it. It's the mask that really amps things up. Yeah, but up. I th- it's my freedom. think that's... My freedom. <laughs> freedom. <laughs> but, but I think that's a... It's a... What's the word? You know, it's a function of, of other shit. So, like... I mean, I, I don't know. I guess you do see... You see... Um, you know, people in the supermarket, people love to, oh, that's the one that pisses me off when people what? manufacture shit like that and make videos now. Oh, it's very obvious they're fake. Oh, the, yeah, yeah. Yeah, right. and they're filming some, you know, older white woman pretending to be a Karen, and it's yes. like, oh, that, it's bad enough that this happens. <laughs> You're just yeah, fanning the, the it, That's flames. all it is. They're stoking the fire. But, um, yeah, the, the, the airline thing, I don't know why it's, because the, people don't want to be told. Nobody likes it. Yeah, yeah but they don't want to be told what they, they can and can't do. But now, why? but see, they've always been that way, but they used to keep it inside. But now after certain things that have happened in our society, now they feel like they can, they can express themselves. Do you think, so it's just in vogue? Yeah, it's very yeah, chic. It, it, yes. Yeah, very it's definitely, chic. there's a whole, you know, so group chic. of people that were, that were really sweat, like kept down for years yeah. with the quote unquote political correctness and certain things. And they didn't want to say anything because they were going to get in trouble. But then when everyone started saying something, then they could jump in and go, Oh, I can say something I now. Everybody's going to say, gonna say no, it. Well, exactly. Yes. Yeah. You, they're not afraid of the retribution anymore. Do, do you, um, I don't know if you remember from, I think it was the last episode where I said something about, you know, you have people that they didn't want, it was talking about the Buffalo shooting and the Mm -hmm. people were saying, um, don't use, you know, the word white supremacist and you're, you're, you're being racist by saying white supremacist. And then they would say (laughs) things like, well, well, Obama created racism in this country, whatever. And I said, Obama invented racism. (laughs) Yeah. And I, so I said like, why don't you just say things like, well, if they could have let me hate people in peace, none of this would have happened. Yeah. That's exactly it, though. <laughs> and that's pretty much... So now, that, but that, that that's like hitting the nail on the head. Now, they can own that hate. Mm-hmm. They can actually own and, and wear it like a freaking, you know... Badge. A badge of honor. Crown. Whichever. Yeah. Sash. A sash. A tiara. A, a tiara of hate. Clutch. <laughs> But people, I, it, in, I enjoy watching people just lose their marbles on like Facebook or just, I love watching the arguing. It makes it worth it. Like I I, I don't argue. I, I don't. Some good shows out there. Right. There really are. Just watching people with their opinion. Everybody's an expert. Oh my God. On, on everything. I didn't know how many infectious <laughs> disease God. experts I had on my exactly. social media. I have no. so many. They know it all. And because they do their own research. Right. Everybody. And yeah. I'm talking both sides of the aisle. Oh, Not I just, know. I'm talking everybody knows it all. Well, I am. Um... I've become a, a, a stickler about that when anybody, and I know it's people, some people are like, God, you're such an asshole. Can you just shut up? Anytime anybody says something to me, I'll say, where, wh- they're like, well, I heard, I read. Where's the link? Did, <laughs> what? Where's the link? Send me a link. Exactly. I'm like, show me the proof. Who said that? Yeah. I do it. I do it to John all the time. He's when he like, says, I read. Yeah. Well, not even I read, but people all are saying, those people want to do is. Yeah. Okay. That was okay. they you, say. That, who's yeah, they? who's they? Who's they? There was a, and there have was you a docu- to all of them. <laughs> there was a there was a documentary. Was it was it Fahrenheit nine eleven? It was one of those where they they did this montage of the media, and I think it might have been on Fox News. I don't know, but where they were talking about people are saying, and and they did this whole big long mon- right. montage of of newscasters saying people are saying it's like so you're just say, like where's the proof? Where's the <laughs> Where's the attribution? Like, yeah. I, people are saying. I have That's arguments like that all the time, and I know some of my friends who are kind of on the other side of, on the uh, an, um, a different of a different political view. Um, they get tired sure. of me because I I don't I don't fan their flames because they want to get in these heated. Uh, 
voting and fraud and racism. And I'm just like, <sighs> okay, so where really? Where did you read that? Yeah. Well, I read it. Yeah. Oh, you don't. You don't understand. <sighs> it's the media. Well, uh, the best part is when. Do you, you watch any other media than one channel? <laughs> <laughs> when you actually cite the source and then they go, oh, well, that's bullshit. Yes! <laughs> right. You can't, you can't, you can't use anything from that source. Yeah. They're all liars there. It's like, all right, well. That's the other thing, like, not, I didn't want to get on this, but anyway, but I think we talked about this before about the Marjorie Taylor Greene thing when they were doing a hearing with her and they were showing her her own tweets and she was like, <laughs> I don't remember that. That could be doctored. I didn't make oh, that. Yeah. They were, and they were showing videos and audio recordings, phone texts, I, I don't know. <laughs> we all made everything up. Yeah. Everybody makes everything up now. So here's the thing. I stay, I don't really get into. I know. I mean, I know I've it's stayed... out there. I really, av I honestly avoid it. I know who all the players are. I know that name. Mm -hmm. um, I, I just, I'm just, I feel like I'm just too stupid to comment on politics. Well, that I didn't get. Like, I didn't get involved on that or anything. I just remember reading the, you know, a headline grabbed me. Yeah. Like, MGT says she doesn't remember <sighs> her own tweets, you know, and I was like, what? And then I read it. I'm like, um, are we surprised? Yeah. <laughs> Do you know? <laughs> Madge, I wanted to ask Todd a question. I'm, sure. I, I don't mean to, like, switch. No, please I want to go back to, to heckling. Going down in oh, okay. Um, do, you, do you have, like, one... A heckle experience that really stands out in your memory of of, of like one specific person. Or... You know, it's funny. It's funny you ask. I don't really get heckled like a uh, horrible heckling because yeah. I, you've heard my act. It's yeah. basically everyday life, so it yeah. can't be like you know they can't come at. Me. I don't You're... do political. I don't do religious. I don't divide rooms. So but you, have you done anti-inflammatory? Just like <laughs> yes. capsaicin. Or <laughs> he's an NSAID. Age. That too. Yeah. Yeah, so I don't, I don't do any. Like I haven't had everything I've had is usually just people wanting to interject. Yeah, or some people like some people feel like a comedy show is a town hall meeting. <laughs> and they yeah. feel like they just want to ask a question at that time, which would like during the past summers during lockdown, I did a lot of shows on people's decks just to make money, and you know, oh, it was, yeah. it was, I called it fresh air comedy. It was fun. It was me and yeah. fifteen to thirty people at a time, and those were fun because there are people who were they were drunk. <laughs> and having a good time, and they would oh. stop me in my set, ask me questions, which was great because it helped add to different bits for me because they gave me material just by asking these questions. So, um, Scott, no, I've never, I don't have any. Mine are usually, uh, you know, friendly fire, fun loving kind of heckles. <laughs> Scott's gone. No, no, dr no uh, drunken. No. A holes. Yeah, I know. I could see. I could see how your 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 act really isn't. Uh, it's not a heckle magnet. Yeah, a heckler magnet. No. I just got so. stuff like, show us your tits. <laughs> you get that on stage? Oh yeah, I've got. She gets it. that at Wegmans. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and from Scott. I do know. Yes. <laughs> well, and then I end up doing it. Maybe that doesn't help the he situation. He was just asking about your underwear a minute God. ago. Oh, boy. Right. A real pervert. God I damn. Am. You're fired. Yeah, stay in your booth. <laughs> Um, so yeah, I've gotten, I, that's another question. Have what? you noticed that women, uh, comics get treated differently? Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, not, I'm not saying that like it's a positive thing. I just, no, I know no. that's what I meant. Like, do you, are they, um, up for more scrutiny uh, uh, and abuse? Criticism. Criticism. Yeah. yeah, I think so. But you know what that, what's also what is worse is how, We've had a couple female comics come to the club that will ask that when we pick them up at the hotel that we actually come into the hotel to pick them up and meet them at the front desk because, you know, they have they have wackos that want to either stalk or talk to them and they don't want that. You know, yeah. they're fearful of it and it's creepy. We also, you know, it happens at the club, too, where, you know. People after the show can get a little too eh, in your face. Yeah. And you got to you got to watch out for them. Yeah. Um, I've heard from friends of mine that do, you know, m much more than I do. They, yeah. they, you know, do it for like a living and, um, talk about the actual, now this is a sticky subject, I guess, with you, with, you know, actually, but I know it happened more so in the past with, you know, club owners or, or 
agents or whomever their de- business, the business end of it. Yeah. Not w- with like, uh, like, like women aren't funny. Oh, you want to get paid? Then you yeah. got to touch my ding oh, dong. That too. Stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. Yeah. Like some Louis C.K. shit. Or well, something. yeah, that's even, that's a whole different spectrum. Yeah. That's a fellow comic being a creep. But I'm sure that happens all that the was, time too. That was that was one of the biggest like disappointments for me. Yeah, to find out because I really really loved Louis C.K. I really loved his his because he you know he did like all that production work himself. You know he was a, know. he was an AV geek, mm-hmm. and I was like, oh that's great. He's editing this stuff himself. He, you know he's directing his own shows and stuff. And then to hear that, it was like, oh man, that yeah, bums you out totally. I and. Uh, as a woman, um, I we found that every time that comes out, you know, you find out a lot of these guys come out and that someone someone tells on them essentially, yeah. and you're like, wow, I thought, you know, like Bill Cosby, oh, yeah. I thought he was a great <laughs> right. guy, yeah. you know, I'm talking was, when it first came out, yeah, yeah, know? no, but that was crazy, um, you know, you're like what, the, yeah, so many, I, so many other people, and you're like, oh, I thought he was a really nice guy, and all of us women will say. Oh yeah, they're all nice guys right. out in. You don't know how prevalent this is. Right. Every day, every day, whether it be at work or the the club, the supermarket, it blows my mind. It really it, blows it was my mind. Because it Wait. Um. So you're talking about just going to just being out in public? You get catcalled and stuff. Yeah. Or how, how often groped, does that happen to you? Or, groped. Oh yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, not. I mean, I mean now I, that I'm going to be 57 in a couple of weeks, not so much anymore. Oh, but, I'm um, sorry. Uh, <laughs> but that's a good thing. No, yeah, I've had you know. My, but if you'd like to go, mad, send me an email. <laughs> um, At the grocery store. Oh yeah. Really? Yeah. Well, so back in the day, like when you were in college and when you were younger, you know, you're in a bar and you're moving along. And there's a lot of people, and you, how many times do you feel a, a hand grab your ass and you don't know where the hand? I came know. From? I hated oh, that. Oh, I had the hand <laughs> coming. I in hated front. it. Yeah. I know, Todd. You know that's what you get for being so irresistible. Little goose. <laughs> oh, <laughs> as Hot Chocolate said, "Oh, you sexy, sexy thing." thing. Um, so at the grocery <laughs> store, that would have. I'm, uh, I'm kind of fixed on this. Where um, I would have to say. You know, it dep- obviously it's a neighborhood thing. Like okay. um, when I lived in Raleigh, North Carolina after oh, college yeah. in the late 80s, and I lived in a neighborhood near NC State. Mm-hmm. So obviously the food lion there was a lot of college students. <laughs> food yeah, I know lion. food lion. All right. So and it was, you know, hey, darling, and, yeah. you know, hey, let me get over to the milk. And yeah. one guy, I'm like. And then he'd honk your boob. Yeah. Yeah. I'm I, sorry. Yeah. But, um, you know. I I should I was just about to say uh whatever but we women shouldn't say that anymore. No, you shouldn't. But it's like exhausting. Mm-hmm. So what do you do? We're covering all the topics here. I know. And everything but smallpox Look or monkeypox. Monkeypox. <laughs> I just because you know if we don't talk about it, it won't happen. Well, we tried that with COVID. I know. And look, it's still here. That's kind of why I said. That. I know. I was being <laughs> facetious. <laughs> Yeah, I know. I'm not being much today, am I? No. Are you big into music, Madge? Yes. Like modern music? What are you into? Um, I'm mostly into old uh, punk, new wave, ska. Okay. Funk. I listen to audiobooks and, and podcasts, so I have no oh, idea. I love what... a good podcast. <laughs> so do I. I wish I could find one. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> do you listen to other podcasts outside yeah, of this one? I do. I try really hard to improve. Yeah? And, um... I, you know, I, I says I sense a lot of like doubt with your show here, or is that just mad on the couch with uh, no, Todd Young? I will be perfectly honest. You make me nervous. Why? Yeah, I could totally tell. Yeah, because I because you're a professional. Okay, and I feel the pressure. Todd fucking just Young talk, to me. Talk, but I also I feel the pressure to be funny. Oh no, don't do that. And I feel the pressure to be good. And um, yeah, just be oh, mad. Just be mad. Okay. Be mad. Fuck you guys. Yeah. <laughs> there, that's it. <laughs> Just pretend we're hanging out at the the bar that you hang out with uh, up in where, where's that area you go to? Fairhaven. Fairhaven, right. We're just hanging out. Okay, I have to take about four shots. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think you have a very nice podcast. Thank 
you. Yeah. Thank you. That makes me very happy. I agree. And, yeah. It, I it, wouldn't have been doing it for this long if I didn't see, think that there was uh, something fun about it. If right. It was Thank good. You. And I listen. Yeah, there's this fun. one that's called You're Wrong About. Hmm. And I love it. And it's basically, um, there's a couple of shows on TV that they're like, what really happened? And yeah. all they do is go in depth and from like uh, JFK assassination. Oh, I, yeah. I'd and like then that. I'll tell it from another angle. And, you know, like this one, I couldn't, I couldn't tell you the name of the host, S. Twinkie, um, no, she, uh, I, <laughs> hostess Twinkie, hostess Twinkie. Oh, okay. um, she, uh, told this one, um, story about the, what was it? Well, the welfare queen. Mm. Oh yeah. Remember how Ron, Ronald Reagan yep. created the yep. wel whole welf welfare queen persona. And, um, they played clips from things that he said, you know, that, she had 80 different aliases and she made $180,000 in fraudulent, you know, welfare. And so he's the one that created, well, part of it, the war on the poor, Yeah, you know, like these scumbags that are on welfare. And so investigate, there actually was a real person. I think, what was her name? Linda White or something. She was real. She... Not that this is great, but she had she she had like five aliases and she got like seven thousand huh. dollars. And this was a case in Chicago. <laughs> and, but, but you know, but boy, did they use that? Yeah, <laughs> right. yeah. And then I had th this is even I'm still verklempt about this one. A lady I met a lady in a bar out in Fairhaven, and um, every year I see her. She has this great Halloween costume, and. Um, she started telling me things she had been in the past and she thought it was hilarious. Yeah. One year, several years back, she went as a welfare queen. Yeah. And she said she went, she was a white woman. She went in blackface and hair curlers and she tied a, or she pinned a bunch of baby dolls to her body. Yeah. She thought it was How hilarious. creative. That's so creative. <laughs> I was like, you're a fucking horrible person. What year was that? <laughs> She told me about it five years ago that it was probably 10 years. So it was probably early 2000s. Yeah. When I was seven, Tiny. I went as a homeless person. Wow. But we called them bums back then. Or hobos. Yeah. Or hobos, hobos. yeah. Somebody yeah. said that recently. Oh, God. Tell me what you think of this. I, John was like, um, there's- Who's John? You keep referencing uh, John. Um, my man friend. Okay. Uh, <laughs> my my situation ship. Okay. <laughs> and so- um, <laughs> He um he's the one that owns the bar out in Fairhaven. Oh, okay. And, and I now it's all coming it. together. Yes. So there's this other bar, bar bar out there that for a long time it's had this thing called Hobos Thanksgiving. Oh boy. Where outside of their bar they have trash barrels and they light fires and then but then it's also like a potluck and everybody brings and they sing a cappella songs. <laughs> <laughs> they play the harmonica and they all have what are those called bindles and so um he's like oh we should have something like that and i said for one hobo that's not cool and he's like yeah well no we'll, we'll do you know like like the train people that you know yeah. used to hop on the train and you yeah. know we'll put like yeah. ashes on our face and i was like I said, that's just, you're making fun of homeless people. That's what hobos were. No, they were adventurous. No, they were looking they for were. work. <laughs> I, I agree. You know, I, I I was corrected by my son once on this too. He's right. I think he's right. Like Scott, riding I don't know if, you the rails? Can, if you can Google the definition of hobo, there's something about them that it, they weren't homeless. They're just out there riding yeah. the rails. Yeah, they were. Oh, okay. Then I mean, I I'm not, I'm corrected. not trying to, but it, it no, because uh, that's when my son and I went to Nashville recently and it's, I don't know if you've ever been, you've ever been? No. Oh, you should go. It's a lot of fun. I know. It's on uh, my And you don't even list. have to like country music or rednecks. Uh, that's what I heard. Yeah. I have yeah. a, oh, Sean I Patrick love McGraw rednecks. lives there. Scott loves rednecks. It's one of his favorites. That's where I go to, that's what I go to see every week. Hobo is yeah. a, a migrant worker. So there's a lot of homeless people on oh. the strip there, just like in yeah. Vegas, you know, there's a lot of homeless people. Yeah. And I said to my son, I go, hey, there's a lot of hobos out here. And he goes, and I said it a couple times. And he goes, I don't think you understand the definition of hobo. And I go, what, I th what's that mean? Doesn't it mean homeless? And he goes, no, they're actually like almost like an adventurer that like to ride the rails. So I learned a lesson. 
But again, I shouldn't have been pointing out the homeless people, but they're everywhere. Well, it's true. very sad. There's. I just heard also, you know, every day that the term for something changes. And, it does. Waste know. management technician. Yeah. <laughs> I just, no, I heard there's a new um, term for homeless, like... Um, what is it? I can, no, I somebody Google it. It's like, I don't want to say it, like shelter deprived or something that, that, that I know, <laughs> shelter, something uh, deficient, you know, something Come that, on, you got to know. That, Let's that take a call. Let's them, take a caller. Caller, are you there? <laughs> this is Larry King. First time, long time. <laughs> oh, God, I fucking hate that. People um, without housing. Oh, I like that. People without homes. Uh, okay. Uh, so anyway, I guess I thought it was a little more dramatic, but, um, no, I, speaking of hobos, that's one of the thing, one of the terms I f think is absolutely hilarious is oh, houseless or unhoused. When, oh yeah. Yeah. Hobosexuals. Uh, oh, because, yes. <laughs> that's what it, hobosexual. That's the word I was going like to say. It's hilarious. Talking about riding the rails. Hobosexuals. <laughs> and there are actually people I've known. They'd start dating someone. So they have a place to live. Really? Oh Yeah. Where'd oh, you did see you this? not hear this? Hobosexuals. I was just was being a comedian. Oh no, it's a you know, it's a <laughs> slang. It's a joke. Yeah. Like like a you know, just happens to be with me, a lot of my gay guy friends say, Oh, he's a hobosexual. You know, huh. so he just starts dating someone so he has a place to sleep. It sounds like you're saying homosexual, but yeah. you're stuffed up. Hobo is <laughs> a hobosexual. Uh, 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 Where's uh, Bob? Uh, Bob, can I Bob? have some more Kleenex? I need some more Vix Vapor. That's what it up. sounded like. Yeah. All right. Hobosexual. <laughs> and I think that's hilarious. I think it, it's a good one. Yeah, yeah, it is. Now, Scott, have you listened to Chris Frangiola's podcast? Yeah. So that he just sits and covers topics of the day. Just yep you know, pop culture, basically, and him and his sidekick just go off on it. And it's very enjoyable. See, and we've done that. I don't, you know, it's so hit or miss. We'll do that, and sometimes it'll be a big hit. I mean, we're no Chris Frangiola well, in his truth. Yeah. true. Yeah. But, I mean, sometimes we'll, it'll be just me and you, and we'll talk about wedgies, and I'll get 40,000 views. Yeah. Then we have one that we, we think is hilarious about something meaningful, and it gets, you know, 30. Yeah. Um, you never know. You some, never know what's what's uh, going to appeal to people. Someday I'll hit on something. That works. <laughs> Eventually, you got to keep plugging away. Well, wedgies. It's. A, I'm telling you, we were gonna. We we still uh, need to have our our uh, sexual therapist on to talk about uh, hey, fetishes. Dude, that was your job. You had one job. But you, yeah. no, you we we did like two weeks in a row on fetishes. So you said hold off on that. It's guy. always sex with him. Well, it is. It really is. Well, my granny panties um, were, i'm sorry no it's okay yeah. um but no still the biggest views i've ever had my number one podcast is in as according to views has been which makes more money wedgies or feet uh in what the fetish land yeah uh, i don't know like it wedgies overwhelmingly Everyone. Well, I, if I had to guess of the two, I would say the wedgies. I didn't but even know there was a fucking. I didn't I don't know get that was a thing. Feet fetishes. Oh, you know what? I never. I meant to I've talk been, about last time, but I forgot. What the 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 cast people who who like. Uh, oh, the, the penis ca cast. We call we call them a caster. Well, oh. the there was a the the woman that was famous for that that did it yeah. with the rock star. She Plaster just caster. died. Yeah. Yeah. She just died. Yep. She just died recently. Did you know about her, Scott? No. Yeah, she would make molds of oh, like uh, Steven Tyler's ding of their dong of and, their junk. Yeah. Yeah, 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 I think. Yeah. I think even like you know this wasn't like that. I think it was like the late '60s. I think even like um, yeah, they had Aerosmith like in Robert there. Plant. <clears throat> sure. Oh yeah, yeah. he's so got a was, nice one. <laughs> Does he? Yeah. Have you been there? No, I'm just so, guessing. You'd oh. see it in his slacks when he was on stage. <laughs> slacks. He yeah. had some tight slacks. Yeah. I wonder if they were reversible Hagers. Oh, I don't know. Sands a belt? <laughs> it could be. <laughs> They're economical. You get two pants in one. What were you going to say, Scott? Uh, I guess it's not important. I don't know. <gasps> Tw about 20 years ago. Oh, get... here we go. About 20 years ago, I was uh, working for a company, and we would we would go out and film these uh, cheerleading competitions. You know, high school, maybe younger. Yeah. This is scaring me. <laughs> well, Getting a little nervous. <laughs> whenever there was an event that had, because some of the kids go out there and they have a broken leg, but they let them go out anyway and do as much of the routine as they can, even if they're on crutches. 
and there was a guy and we know we we recognize his name he would always buy any of the events where somebody had a cast and we we called him the caster that's bizarre it's really weird Wow. But there was a guy. Is I mean, that I mean a perversion? At a, it has to have been. I mean, so, we're yeah. talking we're talking, you know, 12 to 14-year-old girls. Right. I mean, oh yeah, I, yeah, okay. You know? He'd think he, he's but, a casturbator. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he, Thank you. That's about the applause I get at the club too. <laughs> the Does it start stop like that too? Like golf applause. Yeah, I have heard of of many different um Oh, well, we had an episode about that where I went off on a list of things. Of fetishes. Yeah, yeah. Of fetishes. What was the number curse. one fetish in the United States? Well, it didn't... It didn't... Doggy punch. They were... <laughs> That's so disgusting. <laughs> Dirty Sanchez. I just like saying donkey no, punch. They, um, they, it, it, they weren't ranked or anything. It was yeah. just kind of a list of... of <laughs> in order of items, preference. You know, somebody yeah. likes, you know, to have cold salmon fillets wrapped around their... Was that... No. Po- no. I, no. I was <laughs> Jeez, I'm Christ. sure it exists, though. Bone in or bone... Or like deboned. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Cowboy <it's> cut. A... <laughs> um, no, there were... There wasn't anything crazy, but um, we did, like, get... I had, like, everybody in, the, in our comments <clears throat> giving oh. us the skinny on things. Of you know, all the like, different... Yeah, well, like, we, you know... Somebody's like, oh yeah, that's a real big one. People, there's a little, there's a big online community. You yeah. should do that. And then they'll suggest other things like, oh, have you heard of belt fetishes? You know, there's belt. an online community for freaking everything. Yeah. yeah, anything you can think of, make it up. And there's a bunch of people that. The, anyway, Fitz, you have a uh, news. Today? We could, we, we oh, could, we do news. We could yeah. do that. Oh we, my god, let's do news. That might, <laughs> that might save my ass. I don't think so, but we'll give it a shot. Today's National Brothers Day. Oh, I have two. I have two as well. So do Yay. I. Yay. Oh, my God. Six of us. Wait. Um, uh, let's see. In a recent poll of single adults on the dating scene, 51% say they've secretly had a friend accompany them on a date to make sure things were cool. Do you ever bring a friend on a date? A third wheel? Does this have talking to do to with you. Brothers Day? A third wheel? You lo- right from Brothers I, Day. Yeah, I, didn't I, have to touch on it. No, we didn't I, even... I know. Yeah. We didn't even want to talk about Brothers well, I, Day. There's not much to say. Maybe we have I brothers. Did. We all had two brothers. We could have gone off on it. Exactly. But we didn't. I love my brothers. Hi, Tom and Mike. <laughs> um. Anyway, uh, having a third wheel on a date? Um. No, but one of my... Sadly, one of my vices is... <laughs> Watching that 90 days single, 90 days fiance single oh, yeah, life. Yeah, yeah. You know, people that failed on the past, you know, couple thing. Now they show them trying to get laid again. And so this couple, this older woman, she had like her son and her friend go on a date with her. Yeah. Have you ever had somebody like call you during a date to rescue you or? No, but my ex-husband on our first date, um, he met me at a the very the very first Super Bowl that the Buffalo Bills played in. I went to somebody's party, yeah, and um, met music. him. I know. It's met like we're at a cocktail party. I know, and met and met him, and then he asked me to go to lunch, and um, he had he, he was a little drunk and couldn't totally remember what I uh, looked like, and he had his receptionist call him in the middle of our lunch oh uh and just in case and uh so a guy did that it's usually yeah no yeah. he he did, he gets a call during lunch this is 1991 and, oh it's a good year uh, yeah and he um and he's like oh okay and then i don't know a while later he told me yeah yeah uh, he's like well i hung up didn't i i told her no yeah Speaking of fetishes, yeah, uh, this is kind of weird. More than 65 people are on a wait list for the motel room in Indiana where the escaped yep. inmate and prison guard from Alabama stayed earlier yes. this month. I'm on that list. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> I'm in a caster bait in that room. Oh, any sports? I don't have sports. How's the weather looking? Okay, you know, I think we should cover is... mostly sunny with a high oh, near wait. 70. I think we should cover the end of this show. Oh, there we go. I guess the show's over. I <laughs> it up for this week folks uh thanks I'm for Madge. tuning in this thanks is uh, for, todd uh, and... subscribe uh like share we're here fits rock fox studios need some shit done 
call Fitz or email him or check it out. Todd Youngman. That's me. Wash your hands. Yes. Twice. Yep. Uh, CarlsonComedy.com. Carlson. Oh, that's fine. I, yeah. 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 Or follow me on the socials. Or just the completely socials. ignore him and say fuck follow, that guy. Follow yeah. Todd's well, they, TikTok channel. They're probably channel. going to after this episode. Yeah, they're probably yeah. like, who Great. is he? Todd's going to do all the latest TikTok challenges for you. Nope. <laughs> Go on Madge's show where every career ends. Yes. Anyway, that about does it for us. <laughs> Hope to see you see next you week. Casturbate. <laughs>